Hi everyone, this is third video of our AWS tutorials which is focused on AWS Lambda and API Gateway. In the first video we saw how to create the gate and post API and in the second video we saw how to secure those APIs. So we created an AWS API key which you need to pass to get the response from the API. So in the third video what we're going to do actually we're going to integrate the OpenAI GPT-3, you know, API inside the AWS Lambda so that you can think of now you have AWS Lambda GPT-3 powered, you know, AI application, which can, you know, uh, take some input and, uh, and produce some output based on the GPT-3 or OpenAI API. So we're going to use, let's say, a simple, uh, you know, uh, prompt. Let's say what does this prompt does, uh, you know, you have an instruction here that write a product description based on the below information. And we're going to give some, uh, you know, information about the product. Let's say this is the name of the product. These are certain properties that now these are something, you know, you can put anything because it is going to consume whatever you're going to write here. And then we are saying to generate the description, right? So if you uh, click on a submit button, this is going to, you know, make a request to, let's say, open AI and maybe, you know, uh, this is what it is going to write for us, right? So this is what it is writing. So it has written this product description. It has included our name of the uh, you know, uh, name of the product and all these things, right? And maybe, you know, uh, what we can do, we can take this particular prompt and integrate with the AWS Lambda so that we will have a GPT-3 product description generator, right? Which can receive something. So this will be a, a dynamic input and uh, this is going to produce the description for us. So if you are not familiar with this, you know, a, this GPT-3 playground and GPT-3 related stuff, I think I have a, a playlist dedicated to all these things, right? Play, uh, playground, fine tuning of GPT-3, how, how to integrate GPT-3 prompt into the Python and all these things, right? So today I'm not going to focus much on that. The focus will be on AWS Lambda and how to integrate it here, right? So what we're going to do? So we can, you know, simply click on view code and, you know, we, we can integrate this code into the AWS Lambda. So let's first of all, you know, do this thing. Let's, uh, let's import OpenAI into our Lambda function. So where is our Lambda function? So let's say this is the basic Lambda function, what we have, what it does actually, it receives some, uh, you know, request body and simply return that same body here. That's what it does. So let's test it, right? So we have something here, the same uh, input, I put it here, maybe, you know, just to show you, maybe let's say I, I remove this particular thing from here and let's send that request. And you could see we got the same thing in a response. That's what that API does. So let's modify that API and import the open AI here. Let me import the open AI. Let's de deploy, uh, you know, and let's make a request. Oh, seems to be some error. So let's go and look at the, you know, uh, logs. We can go to the cloud logs. So usually you have monitor section here where you can click on logs. We have seen this thing. This is what we used last time to debug our issue uh, when we had something related to the uh, API. So here all the request uh, logs you can find here. And if anything error we have, we should be able to see it here. So let's see, I think I'm not sure whether my internet is slow or what, let's see. Now we can see that it is not able to import the module called OpenAI. Seems to be AWS Lambda don't have OpenAI library installed. Then how do we make sure that particular library is available to, let's say our a Lambda function, right? Which is here. Now, how do we pass that particular uh, library, right? Can we do pip install here somewhere? I don't see any way to do this pip install and all these things, right? So if you uh, look at the AWS documentation and if you want to, you know, pass on some extra code. So first of all, this is our code, what we have, but you have some dependency. You need this particular OpenAI a library, right? So when you have something like this, you can use called AWS Lambda layers or the layers in the AWS Lambda. What layers do? Layers are actually one zip file, right? It's a zip archive that contains some additional code that you require. And we will see how to create that, you know, Lambda layer. And we will add this Lambda layer here. And then we will see whether it is able to recognize the uh, OpenAI thing. So let's do one thing. To create that particular layer thing, uh, let's go to, uh, I hope I've shared my whole screen. So I created one here, one folder, let's say YT demo. And then I created some virtual environment here. If you are not sure how to create a virtual environment, you can just go and, you know, maybe um, see online how to create virtual environment. That is the basic, uh, you know, the this is kind of a good practice. You don't want to install libraries directly inside your system, better you install it here, right? 
and then we have to perform certain steps so i noted down those steps here somewhere yeah so yeah you can create the virtual environment using this command then let's create one directory called python right so i'm here in the command line and maybe oh, not able to copy let me try once again okay now we have created a one directory let's go and we can see uh, directory python i think we can name it anything but whatever tutorials I watch, they all use this Python convention or whatever the things I read, right? So maybe uh, let's name it as a Python only. Now, what we want to do, once we created this particular folder, we want to install this OpenAI library inside this Python folder. So this hyphen T is actually target where to install. So our folder name is Python. That's why we have given this particular thing. So let's do that thing. Again, it didn't copy properly. Uh, let me try once again. Okay, so just like the way you normally you do, pip install OpenAI, but here we are we are using one more flag called hyphen T, which actually stands for target. So we are saying install in this particular folder and let's do this thing, right? So it should uh, install this library inside this particular folder. We can go and uh, look whether we have anything in that particular folder, right? Currently this seems to be empty. Okay, uh, it has done the process. Now you see, there are a lot of things uh, here, right? So now we have here uh, the library that we are expecting an additional dependency or code that we require, right? The next thing we want to do is actually create the zip file of it. And let's create the zip file, right? So we have mentioned all the steps here. So they are nothing, uh, you know, big. First, we just created, let's say, environment, make a directory, install your particular library that you are interested in this particular directory, and finally zip it and we have to upload it to the layers. Let's see. Yeah, I guess uh, the zip file is completed. Now let's go back to our AWS Lambda console here. And if you look at this is our AWS Lambda. If you're not sure, let's go and search AWS Lambda here. So if I search Lambda, I could see, let's see what happens. When you search uh, Lambda here, we were already on, uh, you know, layers. Maybe let's click on Lambda again, right? So you are a couple of tabs. You have first thing, you have functions. Those are nothing but what we have created, right? The functions. And then this is the layer where you can put this thing, right? So let's click on the layers. You see, I already have some pandas layer. I created something. Even during the practice, I have already created the open AI layer. So let's create a layer here. Maybe I can give it to name, you know, open AI layer, something like that. And uh, let's upload the zip file that we just created. This is what we just created. Let's upload this thing. Now this is compatible with this particular architecture, uh, right? And uh, runtime, I think I have Python 3.9. So it is a Python 3.9 I'm going to select. Okay, that's it. Upload your zip and select the appropriate, let's say environment and this architecture kind of thing. Let's uh, create the layer. Now you have a layer. Now layer means some additional code, a dependency that you can use in your any function. Now, since this layer is available, let's go and look at our functions. Again, if you click on Lambda and if you click on our functions, you should see all the functions that we have created. If you just sort them by last modified, this is the six minutes ago, this one. Let's click on this YouTube demo, the function that we have, right? And uh, this function, you see, we don't have any layers at this moment, so we can add the layers. So if you click on the layers and here, yeah, we have click on this layer, right? I click on here layers and then let's click on add a layer. And um, it's a custom layer because what uh, this is what we created. There are other options also you can explore in the document. You can even read about how to create a new layer. Now take our layer, which is uh, open AI layer that we are interested. There will be only one version the first version and let's add. Now what happened, the custom code, the dependency that we have added to that particular layer, now that layer is available to this function. It means now it is no, it knows what exactly the OpenAI module, right? So maybe, you know, we can test it now again. So if it works fine, we should get the response back. Uh, let's send it again. Yeah, it seems to be working. Now you see it is able to recognize the uh, that particular thing. And we got the same thing what we have sent here. So now we have a Lambda which can recognize the OpenAI. Let's integrate that OpenAI request here. So 
you know that right if you have watched my earlier video you should know that you know how to integrate this thing but let's let me repeat those steps for you right first of all we don't want this thing right this is our prompt which is going to be this will be a variable this is something we want to keep as a variable so whatever you enter here you know that is something uh, the description will be generated on top of it and there is nothing specific to this thing like name and properties you can even remove these properties and only keep the name or you can add some more information right this is the free text or any text that you can you know uh, enter here so let's let's uh, you know cut this thing because let's think of this is going to be some kind of variable let's call it this thing as a, maybe the notes or maybe uh, what we, uh, yeah we can call it as a notes and let, let me copy this thing here somewhere okay this is our variable uh, so since this is going to be an input let's let's call this thing as a notes because we know uh, we, we're going to test it here so let's see uh, we have this thing right this is a variable notes now let's copy code here again let's copy from this point maybe and see how it looks in our uh, here right so let me code we can run this thing this is a python variable that we created right notes kind of thing and this will be coming from api right so here we are just testing because it is easy to test here right and uh, yeah this is you see but to recognize this variable we should have this f string syntax right so if you make it the f string this will become a variable that can be right uh, now this key i think i have it key here i have already declared the key here so let me remove right and so we have let's let's print the response and see whether it is working the same way we saw it in the prompt the only thing we did is actually we remove this part which is the input to our you know uh, description generator and we just kept it outside so that we, we once we make it variable you know you can replace with anything now let's see what happens it is making requests and we got this response object you see introducing this smart mobile cover and you see where it is so our response object has a variable or key i would say key is choices and then choices is actually the list and inside that list this is only one item so the choices if you let, let's do something like this so you understand so this is the choices it has only one thing and inside that thing you see that object has a text variable okay maybe uh, i just take it and print it outside so that you see what's happening you see right this is we only printed this particular part of it this one we printed now inside that we have a text variable uh text key not a variable and this is what actually the description of what we have introducing this and that right this thing so we want this thing so let's replace this thing now we have a working code maybe we test with some other thing maybe the smart mobile cover we might say smart car cover <laughs> and let's you know make a request to uh, to create the description for the you know car cover so introducing the smart car cover the perfect solution for protecting your car from the element this robust cover is you know designed to provide your car with superior protection and all these things right so it see we don't even need to give any example we only give an instruction and the input and it simply generated description for us let's take this thing and integrate uh, with our aws lambda right again if you are not happy with this description you know right you can put some examples also inside your prompt so here you can put some examples so that GPT-3 understands. So you can put notes and then maybe the desired description what you have. If you put couple of maybe they say three to five, those are enough for GPT-3. Let's go back to again our notebook here, right? This is what the working code we have. And this is the notes. And let's, I think we, do we have OpenAI key? I don't think we have there. So let, let's, uh, Okay, I think editing inside this is actually I don't like. So maybe I copy this thing here and then I edit here because I don't like editing uh, in that AWS Lambda, right? So here we want this thing, right? This is the body is actually our notes are coming. And let's take this part here. Right, and paste it here. So we got this response, right? This, we got a response. Actually, we want to send this response, this particular value we got from the OpenAI uh, at the back. So this is what actually we want to send a response, right? And maybe what else? Yeah, this we will look into this body if you are not okay with this thing, right? And yeah, we want this OpenAI thing also, right? The key. 
Now I am using key like this, but this is not the right way to do this thing. Maybe when you work with the team, this API key can be accessed as an environment variable or maybe let's say AWS secret manager. This is for the demo purpose because my focus is not on that security and all other aspect, rather showing you how you can use OpenAI, you know, and integrate with the AWS Lambda. That is why I might take this liberty. So let me copy this code and see if we face any error there, we will fix, right? So let's go here. This is our body, which is body is nothing but whatever we are sending from here, right? This notes uh, kind of thing. So actually we should print the uh, body. We see how we are getting, yeah, the notes. So we can't use, uh, you know, let's go back here. We can't use notes directly, right? So notes are actually coming inside the body. So the notes, let's say this body, and then what is variable name? Is it same? Yeah, it's the same notes. It's okay. So now we, uh, whatever the body re request body we got. So this request body is actually in the JSON format and you use JSON loads. So it became a Python dictionary. So now we have a dictionary here called body, which has a key called notes, which you got from the request. And we have dynamically put that thing here. Now it became like, you know, uh, it can generate for anything what you're going to pass. Uh, I think all are fine. Let's run this thing and see what happens. Okay, all looks good. Deploy this thing. Every time you make a changes, you need to keep, uh, you know, you need to deploy so that it can, uh, it will reflect. So let's see. Now we have put only properties as affordable. Okay. Yeah, so we got something introducing the new smart mobile core, yeah, because we put a mobile core, right? So it is working now, it is able to make a request to something. Let's try something else, right? Maybe the product, uh, oh, I'm not that creative. <laughs> uh, maybe we say the mobile phone only. A mobile phone. Let's, let's call it maybe uh, Samsung mobile phone. And maybe we give a properties like, you know, uh, something like 4 GB RAM. RAM or a 16 megapixel camera. Okay, I think these two properties are enough. And let's let's uh, send a request and see whether it uh, you know creates something for the Samsung mobile. We should have given some name, some kind of in a way. So introducing the Samsung mobile phone, the perfect device for all your needs, featuring 4GB and maybe maybe we can put something uh, different. You know, Samsung mobile. Let's call it as the X, Y, Z, right? And then properties, 4 GB RAM, 16 megapixel camera, uh, you know, good battery life. Slim, something like that. Okay, so introducing the Samsung phone X, Y, Z, a card. This also I don't like anyway. Perfect all-rounder for your need. This phone is loaded with features such as a 4GB RAM, 16 megapixel camera to ensure you get the most of your device. You will get benefit from its good battery life. Okay, uh, pretty good. If you want, you can put some examples. So yeah, this is what we can do with, right? So if you are able to build something like this, means you can create an API-based product, right? Which can take something and you can integrate this API anywhere, a no-code tool, a, any kind of a front-end. And even you can sell it just like an API so that the other services can consume. I, as a freelancer, most of the time build only this kind of solutions. A AWS Lambda API based solution, which is using some kind of a transformer model. Either it could be, let's say, Hugging Face transformer model, or even it could be, let's say, GPT-3 kind of model, right? This is what most of the time deliverable I give to the client, creating a Lambda or AWS Lambda based API. So if you know this kind of thing and you want to work with me, you can simply ping me because, uh, you know, recently I have hired three interns who will help me with my freelancing work. And maybe when you message me on LinkedIn, I might not reply you immediately, but I might reach you later sometime, right? So if you are interested to work with me, I usually prefer people who are already familiar with my work, the kind of tools I use, the kind of, you know, API I create like GPT-3 transformer and all these things. So if you are one of them, you can simply ping me on LinkedIn. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. And as I said, you need to watch the other two videos to understand, you know, right, maybe the what is lambda, what is gate and post request, right? So thank you very much.